you couldn't choose an area in the world that was more uniquely suited to producing wheat. Across Washington State, you have that core group of farmers that get it and are willing to take some risks, and it's paying off. It's fun to be a researcher working with people who are open to new ideas. In 1825, the first wheat crop was planted in Vancouver, Washington. Prior to uh, powered equipment, prior to um, tractors that we know today, much of that work was done by horse. A lot of the wheats that were growing here in the old days were very tall, but uh, because of that, since they grew so tall, they all fell over, and that's called lodging, and then it made it extremely hard to pick up with the older equipment back in those days. A hundred years ago, some of the best producing land probably yielded 30 to 40 bushels per acre with the varieties that they had available and the production practices at that time. The yields in Whitman County are higher than uh, virtually any other place in the world. And those yields frequently for winter wheat push 100 bushels per acre, sometimes 120 or 130 bushels per acre. In Washington, we produce primarily winter wheat you prepare it, you plant it, you hope it gets watered, you mow it, it comes into the combine, we haul it to our local country elevators, often a co-op. And from there, they load it out onto semis, and the semis take it down to the Snake River, where it's uh, then loaded onto barges that barge it down to uh, Portland and the Vancouver area. The river provides a very efficient way for, for moving a lot of grain uh, by barge. You know, it's, it's, it's a river highway that is unencumbered, essentially. And it's reloaded then onto ocean-going vessels to go to foreign countries. Probably 85% of our wheat is exported to, to regions of the world. Right here in the Palouse, the ability to grow 120 bushel rain-fed wheat is just uh, pretty amazing. The climate in Washington is ideal for growing soft white wheat. Whitman County is only about 40 miles wide, and on one side of the county you get nine inches of rainfall, and then on the other side, pushing up against the Idaho mountains, you get almost 30 inches of rainfall. In total, there are over 60 scientists here at WSU that are working on some aspect of wheat production. We're fortunate to have a lot of young, world-class researchers. When you've got a problem out in your field, you know, you can call the extension agent and they can come take a look at your crop. They've been able to go out to the farms, they've been able to isolate plants, they, they see what's going on, they take it back and they correct the problem and now these newer varieties that are coming out already have that resistance built into them. We scientists like to think that we have job security because as soon as we fi think we figure out how to control a weed, it adapts and then we have to change our, our strategy a bit. I would say that research is the lifeblood of the industry because there are always new diseases, there are always weather challenges. You can't just fund something one time and expect to walk away and think you have the problem solved. And, and that's where the, the long-term funding of the Grain Commission has been quite valuable. You know, they, it comes every, every year and as the, as the issues evolve, um, they're able to pick out the things they want to fund and keep, keep us moving forward in the wheat industry. The investments that the Grain Commission is making now at Washington State University are really going to solidify the position of, of WSU as a world leader in wheat research. You know, we're going to have uh, 9 billion people on the face of the earth by the year 2050, and I think a lot of those people are going to go hungry if we don't keep advancing our research. i got to grow more in a more efficient manner. Uh, I can only, again, I can only do so much machinery, knowledge, but research, that'll be the key. We really need the, the work that's done at WSU. I think it's pretty uh, obvious that we're gonna have more mouths to feed and that in order to do that, we're gonna have to be able to produce more crop on probably a dwindling supply of farm ground and that's, that's a major challenge and that's gonna take some real effort on the research side of things. Now is the time to invest in yourself, which would be 
agricultural research. The investment in, in WSU and research pays dividends. It builds local economies and it builds a state economy. I do see Washington State University and the Washington Grain Commission continuing to be close partners um, for the next 50 years and the next 100 years. Through that partnership, you can accomplish things that individually you can't really, really do. And so the weed industry needs WSU and WSU needs the weed industry. And, you know, working together, we can, we can accomplish a lot.